Good evening and welcome to St. Lawrence for the celebration of the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider this evening is Father Chung Sun, assisted by Deacon Tim. Please stand and join us together in singing number 519, Sing to the Mountains, number 519. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, good evening, everyone. T today, uh, we celebrate the 11th Sunday. We hear much about life, the seed of life that bears fruit, the great tree. And you know, in time of grimness, of uh, you know, many distraction and sin, we might feel that it's difficult, but just the seed that is Christ in us that we get to receive from can bear much life. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin and so prepare ourselves for the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you graciously plant us like trees in your world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gratefully tend us and watch over our growth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you await the time when our fruit grows ripe for the harvest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our plea, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree and high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm today is taken from Psalm 92.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wipes the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. First, a happy Father's Day to all the fathers here this evening. May you have a blessed and joyful day tomorrow. As I pondered and reflected on today's readings, what came to mind was how they paint in our minds three images of the kingdom of God. First, the image of the Father in Ezekiel then the images of seed as proclaimed word of God in the gospel, 
being scattered on us by our Father God. Then the Word of God, Jesus himself being the mustard seed. Finally, Paul continues that image by speaking about the seed becoming a mature plant and being harvested. In our first reading, Ezekiel is painting this image of what God will do for Israel at one of its lowest points. He is writing during the Babylonian exile. The message is one of hope for God's chosen people. God, the loving Father, will plant the branch on the mountain heights of Israel. It will become a majestic cedar in which birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its burrows. You have to envision a 130-foot tree, about 11 stories, like a California redwood, with all its beauty and grandeur. The vision of great hope for a people in exile of becoming part of a majestic kingdom and converting the Gentiles to belief in the one true God. It is a foreshadowing of Jesus and his body, the church. The beauty and grandeur of both the church present and the church future. This passage should create a vision of great hope for us today as the body of Christ, along with a vision of majesty and beauty of the eternal kingdom. The second image of the kingdom of God is that of the patient farmer. That the word, Jesus, is planted in our soul by our creator, God. It will grow in us and in the church. Through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. We do not have to know how. We just have to trust that it will grow in a way that the Creator wants it to grow. Our anxiety over the growth of the kingdom is fruitless. We are to trust in the fact that God is our Father. He wants what is best for us. We are to obey him like Jesus did so that what he has planned for us can come to pass as it did for Jesus. What came for Jesus from his trust and obedience? The kingdom of God here on earth, the church, and the opening of the gates of heaven for us with Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father. What does the church give us? The sacraments for our salvation and the salvation of the world. God is the farmer. He knows when to sow the seed and when to harvest. We need to trust that he is truly the farmer with full and complete knowledge and love of his creation. We need to allow ourselves to become dependent on God, not independent of God. This week, I received my quarterly newsletter from Manresa, a Jesuit, rehout, a Jesuit retreat house in Convent, Louisiana, that I've attended for a number of years. In the newsletter was a reminder from the retreat center director, Brother Larry Huck, about the level of trust or dependence we should have in God. Brother Huck wrote, One of the experiments St. Ignatius of Loyola requires Jesuit novice to undergo what is called the pilgrimage experiment. The experiment requires the Jesuit novice to go on a journey by being dependent on God. Today, Jesuit novice do this by being given a one-way bus ticket to a city and five dollars. They are to visit certain sites, 
pray for people, and help others in need, all the while being in need themselves. The novice has about eight days to make his way back to the novitiate, stopping in different cities along the way, serving others in need, as well as begging for help to purchase their next bus ticket, having a place to stay, and having food to eat. When they depart a city, they are only allowed to keep $5 after the purchase of their next bus ticket and must give away any remaining money to those in need. The goal of the experiment is to help the novice understand the importance of depending on God for what is needed. In the Jesuit spirituality, there is also the daily examine, taking the time to review our day in the evening, frame by frame, moment by moment, to relive how God touched our lives that day, recalling where we chose to do the will of God and where we chose not to do the will of God. Both of these exercises help us to understand how constant God's grace is in our lives. How we are to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to live our lives in imitation of Christ. The third image we hear today is that of the mustard seed. The smallest seed that grows into the greatest of shrubs. The beginning of the church is in the smallest community spiritual community in the world, the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The church immediately expanded by the 12 apostles. Then at Pentecost, it expanded again to 3,000. It eventually expanded to cover the earth, growing now to over 2 billion Christians across the planet. What is interesting about the image of the mustard seed is nothing, it is nothing like the majestic cedar. It is rough and stout. It grows in a haphazard way with branches growing in every direction, but it continues to grow and expand. In some ways, like the church at times, it does not look glorious, but it sure is sturdy and steadfast, despite all the trials and tribulations. It continues to grow and expand. Like the church, it is fed from the inside. The mustard seed by the nutrients of the earth. The church, us, by the nutrients of the sacraments and the Holy Spirit. But then Paul reminds us of something very important in 2 Corinthians. Even though we grow in our strength and in God in this life, we should rather be willing to go home to live in eternity with the Lord. It is in our DNA put there by our Creator God. We live to be strong and fruitful. We aspire to please him in our earthly life. But would you rather live the body, leave the body, and go home to the Lord? Our goal should be eternal life for ourselves, our families, friends, and members of our community. So what should we walk away knowing about the kingdom of God from these things? Three stories. The kingdom was established by God through Jesus Christ for us as created beings of God to be fully dependent and trusting of God for our well-being through Jesus, his church, and his sacraments so we can work with the Holy Spirit to transform the world and enter into the eternal kingdom.
I invite all the fathers to please stand. And uh, please, uh, if uh, your family's there, they can join in and pray. Maybe they can touch you, you know, but touch the shoulder, okay? Yeah, don't be trying to tickle your dad or anything, okay? Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you have created us and call us your own. Bless our fathers that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. In moments of joy, rejoice with them. In time of struggle, give them your courage and perseverance. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them always with the spirit of profound respect. May the example and prayer of St. Joseph inspire them to live their vocation with courage. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. At baptism, we were planted in the house of the Lord, and so we pray that we and our sisters and brothers may flourish in the courts of our God. That more men and women may be called to serve God's people as priests and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers that nations not yet open to the gospel may become fertile fields for sowing of God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all our teens and adult leaders that will leave for Steubenville this week, that the Holy Spirit will inflame their hearts with Christ and have them return home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For fathers, grandfathers, and all those who have fathered us throughout our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, those listed in the book of the sick and their caregivers will know the strength in their time of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially Bunky Layton, mother of Michelle Broussard, Rip Carroll, and Tracy Wells, Teresa Wynn Tu Tuta, Jean Troutman, brother of Mary Tan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our own intentions and the intentions of this Mass, the souls of Dorothy and V.L. Ernest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For all those who suffer with chronic illness, with cancer, addiction, mental or spiritual affliction, for their healing in their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord and the respect for life from conception to death, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the souls that have no friends, no families to pray for them, the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. God of all, you give us with the seed of faith and entrust us to sow and nurture it. Hear the prayer we make and grant them according to your will through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As our gifts are brought forward and prepared at the altar, please join us in singing number 696, Ubi Caritas, number 696. <laughs> brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Put a praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who in the offerings present here provide for the twofold need of human nature, Nourish us with food, and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Almost took your line. It is mingling the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bringing eternal life to us who receives it.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should have done of my, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Please join us in singing our first communion song, number 944, in remembrance of you, number 944.
Let us pray. Has this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, 
foreshadow the union of the faithful in you. So may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. So a couple of announcements. First, uh, this Friday morning, almost 180 of our teens plus chaperones and staff will depart for the Steubenville Youth Conference. Come see them off the 815 Mass or definitely keep them in your prayers for this weekend, that it be a beautiful and um, uh, inspiring time for them this weekend. On Friday evening at 7 p.m., there is a healing service in the chapel. Wednesday's the last day to get advanced, oh, Wednesday's the last day to get advanced pricing for the edge lock-in. And later this month is a fun build your own Sunday event for families. Be sure to get a bulletin on your way out of Mass for details on all of these things. And of course, happy Father's Day to all of you great fathers out there. Yes, happy Father's Day. I, I'm a father too, you know? So maybe that Sunday, I'm gonna take up on that ice cream Sunday coming up uh, for family night. Anyway, I will be there for the send-off mass, and I'll be going with them to Steubenville. You know, I've been sharpening on my dance move. Hopefully, I can uh, challenge some of them on, at Steubenville. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us join together in singing number 576, Canticle of the Sun, number 576.